Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. I would like to um, add a few very important um, pieces of information about sequences. Um, in particular, we are talking today about bounded sequences. And very important theorem, which has again a name, Bolzano-Weierstrass theorem. It's a very important theorem for many other um, aspects of using derivatives and, uh, and, and, and other parts of this higher level of uh, mathematics, I would say. So this is one of the fundamental theorems and uh, the fundamental theorems are always very close to axioms and that's why you really have to be very careful not to jump to any kind of conclusion without really thinking about how that actually jump is uh, mm, uh, founded upon, based upon. I mean, it should be either axiom or a previous theorem which you have already proven. So I will try to be careful about this. So, now this lecture is part of the Unizor.com advanced course of mathematics and uh, the purpose of the whole course is just to develop your logic, your creativity, your analytical thinking, and that's why I'm actually uh, devoting a lot of attention to proofs and uh, solving the problems. So in this particular case it's uh, one of the fundamental theorems which I'm going to uh, basically present to you. So we're talking about sequences. Now first of all we are not talking about any sequence, we are talking about sequences of real numbers. Now that's the first very interesting requirement second requirement for our sequence is that it is bounded. So if you have a sequence we are talking about certain left and right bounds where all the members of this sequence are located in between of. Now, sequence has a, an infinite number of members. So it is kind of intuitively obvious that there must be some concentration points between A and B. You see, if the sequence is not bounded, we can actually just go forward and forward to infinity, like one, two, three, four, and there is no concentration point. At each point, uh, around each point, you don't have anything else but this particular point, right? But in this case, when the sequence is bounded from both sides, all these infinite number of members of the sequence must fit in between A and B. So they must concentrate somewhere. And it can be expressed in the following statement, that the uh, bounded sequence always has a convergent subsequence, which means I can actually take certain uh, particular members of this sequence, let's say x2, x25, x100, etc., etc., which also contains infinite number of um, members, and it's uh, convergent to some point in between A and B. So, being obvious obviously is great, <laughs> but as usually the challenge is to properly prove it. And here is, um, I, I suggest, um, I would say, rather elegant way of proving this particular theorem. Now, it's not based on nothing, it's obviously based on some previous material which we have already learned about sequences and real numbers. Now, what's important about real numbers, and um, we have already uh, addressed this before in one of the lectures, is their completeness. Now, completeness basically means the following. If you have certain number of uh, points, a set of points, if you wish, and um, it's bounded, let's say, from above, so, if this certain number of points, a set of points, is bounded from above, then there is so-called lowest 
or least upper bound. So this is an axiom of completeness which is very particular for, for, for real numbers because if it's for instance we are talking about a set of all rational numbers this is not true because this set of numbers etc obviously has a limit of zero and zero is rational number but this set of numbers which is all the numbers which are less than well not less than square root but xn square is less than 2 so these are all rational numbers and I'm basically getting the approximation of the square root of 2 here right so these are all rational but their limit which is square root of 2 is not rational so sometimes bounded in this case from below um, uh, a sequence of rational, rational numbers does have a rational uh, limit and it belongs to the set of rational numbers but in some other cases that's not true with real numbers this is always true so whenever you have some kind of a sequence of monotonic sequence for instance or even not monotonic that does, doesn't really matter any set of numbers here and it's bounded from above let's say then there is a least bound and it's also real number now same thing from below if you have certain number of bounds from below there is a upper uh, the most upper um, lower bound so this is called an axiom of completeness and we will be using this particular axiom then another and this is already a theorem by the way which we have proven before was uh, a theorem with a funny name uh, it's a theorem about two policemen and a drunk man or there are many other names which are kind of similar so if you have a sequence of three different sequences and these two converge to one particular limit and for each particular m this one in between these guys so these are two policemen which are actually leading the drunk man between them on both hands to exactly the same limit so then this also has a limit and it's exactly the same as this common limit of a and b so this is also a theory which we have proven before and uh, obviously you're welcome to go to previous lectures you see my lectures about limits sequence limits um, first were introduced as part of algebra because I needed it for some some other purposes um, so these relatively simple theorems are uh, uh, proven over there and uh, in the description of this particular lecture I do put exact reference to the lecture which provides all this information so let's consider we do have an axiom of completeness and we do have a theorem of two policemen and a drunk man and that should be sufficient to prove that from any bounded sequence we can always extract a convergent subsequence now the whole sequence doesn't really have to be um, convergent for instance have for instance this particular one minus one one minus one etc now it's obviously bounded because it's only two numbers minus one and one so it's bounded from left by minus one and by right by one but it does not converge to anything however we can always pick a sub sequence which is for instance this one this one this one etc which are which are one 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 so one 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 obviously converges to one or minus one whatever minus one minus one minus one converges to minus one so not only uh, not, not necessarily we can uh, talk about convergent of the entire sequence uh, 
but we definitely know that there is some kind of a subsequence which uh, converges. And here is an interesting proof, which again I would consider rather elegant. Let's do it graphically. So this is your A, this is your B, and somewhere there are points of our uh, sequence Xn, somewhere here. Now, Xn is an infinite set. Now, even if you have the same point, let's say minus 1, 1, minus 1, 1, even if you have um, the repeating numbers in this sequence, it's still different numbers. I mean, considering their quantity, it's still infinite. So it's one and then another one and then another one. doesn't really matter that you repeat it. It's still multiple points. Well, namely infinite number of points. So the, 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 this particular sequence has infinite number of points. And they are in between A and B. Let's uh, divide this particular segment from A to B in half by point M0. Well, we do have some infinite number in between A and B, so it might be infinite number either here or there, or in both cases, right? <coughs> because if there is a finite number here and finite there, then together it will be finite number, which is not the case. Okay, so let's pick the half which contains infinite number of points. Well, let's say it's this half. Let's divide it by 2 and 1. Now, there are infinite number of points between M0 and B. Now, M1 is a midpoint, so there might be infinite number either here or there or in both. We pick any one of them. Let's say it's from this to this. We divide it again. Now, what do we see here? We see the nested intervals, right? The interval M0B is inside AB. The interval M0, M1 is inside M0, MB. So, these intervals, let's call AB is, let's say it's I0. Then M0B, it's interval I1. Uh, what next? Ne M0, M1 is I2. So, what I have is, I have a sequence of nested intervals Each of them contains infinite number of points of my, or members, if you wish, of my sequence. Almost there. Now, what's obvious is that we are dividing the lengths in half, which means that the length is uh, obviously converges to zero. The length of these intervals is infinitesimal value, right? It's one half of the original length, then one quarter, one eighth, etc. And we know that this sequence converges to zero. Okay, now how can I choose a sequence, subsequence, which is converging? Well, very simply, I will take one point from this one one point from this one, one point from this one, etc. They are inserted into each other, they're nested, and these are obviously getting closer and closer to something. And that something actually must be a limit. So all we have to do is to rigorously prove that there is a limit, and these points, which I uh, have chosen do, without any restrictions, except that it, the corresponding point belongs to the corresponding interval, right? So we have to just prove it. Idea, this is idea. Idea is obvious, right? Yeah, I divide uh, the uh, interval by 2, and then another by 2, and then another by 2, and in each uh, consecutive interval, I have still infinite number of points. And I pick one point from each interval. And it's mu it must converge. So now we have to prove the convergence. Okay. 
Let's consider left ends of these intervals. Well, it's A, M0, again M0. Next, maybe it would be, let's say, M3. And for instance, this is where infinite numbers, so it will be M3, M2, right? So in any case, if I consider just left boundaries, this one, this one, uh, again this one, and then this one, they are, since intervals are nested, so the left boundaries are always monotonically increasing. So the left boundaries, let's call them L0, L1, L2, they are monotonically increasing. Now, they obviously form certain set of numbers. It's bounded from above by B, for instance, right? Which means that for um, using the axiom of completeness, there must be least upper bound. So there is a least upper bound, and they are infinitely closing two words, monotonically closing to this one. Now, let's talk about right boundaries. Right boundaries are B, then B again, then M1, then M2, etc. So obviously the right bounds, which I can call R0, they are monotonically decreasing. And they are also bounded on the left, monotonically decreasing, bounded on the left by A, which means by theorem, by axiom, sorry, of completeness, must be the upper bound, which is R. But now let's think about the difference between L0 and R0, L1 and R1, etc., etc. That's the length of the interval, which is goes to 0, which means that these two points cannot be uh different points because the difference between them in this case would be greater than zero and since these guys are infinitely close to this and these guys are infinitely close to this then eventually the difference between them would not be infinitesimal right so if you have this is my left this is my right so the left goes to here and the right goes to here. So uh, the difference between them obviously would be greater than, let's say, one third of this distance eventually, because one third would be here and one third would be there. So after a certain number of iterations, my difference will definitely be not infinitesimal. So L and R must exist, m m must uh, uh, um, be equal to each other. And, not only that, what I also here right now have is that left eyes is less than my uh, freely chosen member of the I, interval I and uh, it's obviously less than R. Well, which basically proves that this kind of picture is completely impossible. What is possible is this picture. So right boundary must always be, uh, must always be greater than left. But it doesn't really matter. The matter is that they must be equal to each other. And since they are equal to each other, so this is monotonically increasing towards L. This is monotonically decreasing towards R, which is equal to R, uh, uh, which is equal to L. So, by the theorem about two policemen, our drunk man YIs is supposed to go to converge to the same number. And that is the end of the proof. Our sequence of one particular point from each corresponding nested interval is exactly the subsequence from X, which is converging. That's it. I suggest you to 
read the proof of this theorem uh, on unizor.com. It's a very, very detailed explanation of the same thing, basically, just to make you a little bit more comfortable with this theorem. And uh, uh, again, it, it, it has a very fancy name, bolzano Verstras, because these are two mathematicians which, who really were the first one to prove this theorem and use it in subsequent research, which they have. They have a lot of contributions to, uh, to calculus. Okay, that's it for today. Thank you very much and good luck.